What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another Detroit Lions preview slash prediction. And today, we have a divisional matchup. It's Lions, it's Bears for the first time this season. So let's get it started. Welcome, ready to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with another preview slash prediction. And I'm, I'm optimistic about this video because I think last week, we proved that we are halfway there. We had the score prediction right at halftime. If the game would have ended at halftime, we would have nailed it. Now, there was a second half, and that happened. We handled business, so I'm not mad at it. But I had the score prediction right if the game would have ended at halftime, which tells me that we're getting somewhere. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna look at this as a positive. We're almost there. So I think this week is the week that we finally get a score prediction right. Why? I don't know. Really nothing different than any of the other weeks, but I just feel good about it. I feel good every week, but I really feel good about this one. I really do. We'll see if it happens. Now, before we get into the preview slide and then also the score prediction at the end, we, of course, first have to start off with what we know so far of who's going to play in the injury designations on Friday. We'll start off with Isaiah Bugs, who has been ruled out for this game, the defensive tackle. Hate to see that first off, but this could also be an opportunity for a guy like Broderick Martin to be activated in this game and potentially get some snaps. Now, I don't really expect him to start but if he did would I be completely shocked no I look at Broderick Martin in this kind of game as this is the game for Broderick Martin I think on paper this is the game for Broderick Martin that you would love to have him ready and up and playing at a really high level now maybe that's something that not er this early in his career we're feeling that he's there yet but I think down the road this is the vision of what Broderick Martin can do for you defensively opening up freeing guys up defensively to really deal with that mobile quarterback in Justin Fields who's returning this week so to me, on paper, Braddock Martin makes a ton of sense. But I, I don't really necessarily know that he's going to start. I think Benito probably will in this game. But we'll keep an eye on it. There's an opportunity there. Also, Levi, full participation. He's healthy. Now, I don't know that he'll be active because he's had some healthy scratches this season. But again, if they wanted to go that direction, he is available. So that's something to keep an eye on. That's also good news. The other bad news is Jonah Jackson. Our left guard has been ruled out for this game as well with wrist slash ankle wrist popped up this week. This is unfortunate after last week, the way they dominated in the trenches and Jonah Jackson was a big part of that. The good news is that Frank Ragnow is going to play. Full participation today. He is set to play in this game as well as Graham Glasgow as well as both of the tackles. But this is tough to not have our left guard. I would assume Kaode would step in because Kaode I think has actually played pretty well this season and he's naturally slides right into that left guard position. If they wanted to go with rookie Colby Sorcell they could possibly look to move Graham Glasgow to the left guard spot. That's a possibility though I think last time we saw both of those guys on the field I thought Kaode would played better, but they could go with the young guy, and they also could look for maybe a little bit more athleticism against this team in particular. I'm sure we'll bring someone else up as well just for depth purposes, but I would expect Kaled would be the guy, but I don't know. And then also Ify. He is questionable for this game, dealing with a hand injury, but he's had full participation the last two days, really more so here for safety depth, but then also special teams value. Outside of that, a lot of good news. Peoples-Jones, he can be active in this game. Now, I don't know how much he's going to play, but I do think against his defense, there are going to be spots and opportunities where he could be a big part. He could be a big time piece and give us a couple of clutch receptions in this game. I just think it makes sense with how situationally they like to play defensively. I don't know that he'll get those opportunities, but if he does, he could come through big time for us in this game in some key moments. So we'll keep an eye on that, but he's a, he's available if the Lions want to allow him to play. The good thing is we're pretty healthy at receiver right now because Khalif Raymond is also set to play, which means that he's probably going to be returning punts this week. But we do have options if he's not. Now, now, onto the Chicago Bears side. There's really a lot of good news here going on with Chicago. Their offensive line is kind of a new look offensive line from last year, but Nate Davis is set to play, which is going to push Tevin Jenkins back to left guard, slide Nate Davis, Nate Davis and a right guard, and then Cody White here is kind of the odd man out, but their offensive line is in a pretty solid position there. Their fullback is, he is healthy. Now, it's not just a name or it's like, oh, fullback, he's not going to get snaps. They do utilize their fullback in this offense. It's actually a pretty big part of their offense as a lead blocker. They run a lot of lead type of plays, so that's actually, I think, a pretty nice addition for them as well just when you talk about some of the flexibility within their offense every game has looked kind of different and they haven't been with Justin Fields for so long now it's every game just feels a little bit different with this offense but I think he's a pretty big part of their offense when he's available and he could be this weekend and then also Tremaine Edmonds this is one to really keep an eye on because he was limited today after missing eight straight practices and he's questionable for this game their linebacker the reason that you have to keep an eye on him really is one because if he can play he'll play but also Jack Sanborn is listed as questionable for this game after not participating
practicing today on the injury report with ankle slash illness. So if he can't go, they would love to have Edmonds available. I touched on it. Justin Fields, he's going to be back. Justin Fields is going to play this weekend, as well as Khalil Herbert, the running back, a big boost to this backfield and potentially could tie along with Deontay Foreman for this weekend's game. We'll keep an eye on that one because he's questionable after limited participation all week with an ankle injury. But Khalil Herbert, they said he's looked good. They said the same thing about Edmonds as well. So I think for both of those guys, it sounds positive. Outside of that, Noah Sewell, he's been listed out for this game, but he's been mainly a special teams piece. And then Terrell Smith. The reason I'm curious about that one is just to see who's getting the snaps really in the back end. We know Jalen Johnson will. We also know Kyler Gordon will in the slot. But who do they go with at outside cornerback there? A lot of times it's been Tyreek Stevenson. I don't think he's been very good this season. So that's something to really keep an eye on because I think if you look at who's the matchup offensively, and we'll probably talk about it multiple times in this video, Tyreek Stevenson a lot of times becomes that matchup that you want to go after in this one. But with Terrell Smith available in this one, maybe they go that, that direction. Either way, they're both rookies. So we'll keep an eye on that. I'm sure the Lions will try to attack either of those players that are in the game. With that being said, let's move on to the preview side of things. And I'm going to start off Let's start off with Chicago's defense. Let's start off here again. I tried to kind of minimize this as best as possible because these usually get very long. So I'll try to minimize this as best I can and really stick to what I think are the key things to look for in terms of the run game, pass game, both sides of the ball. So let's start there. Chicago's defense and their run defense. Now, statistically speaking, it's one of the best run defenses, if not the best run defense in football, just by the numbers. 3.2 yards per carry. That's first in the NFL. 76 yards per game. That's second in the NFL. And fifth in expected points added as a run defense okay so it's a very good run defense by all the numbers and then you watch them and you see it now it took a little bit for it to kind of build on me like okay no this is actually a legitimate run defense at, at first I was like oh we're gonna attack this team after seeing last week I think I was just kind of like fired up like yo we can get after anybody but then you continue to watch them and you're like no there's real talent here even though they're not necessarily big names across the board of course they added Montez Sweat which helps them on the edge gives them a real presence as a run defender and we know Yannick hasn't been like a big piece there really in his career in the run game, but he'll give you some flash moments, his ability to get penetration upfield, but what they have at the defensive tackle position between Billings and Jones, those two defensive tackles to me are really the key for this entire run game, really to see how the Lions look to attack them offensively. I'm sure they'll be versatile like they usually are, and they'll adjust as the game goes on, but the guy that I'm going to be circling for this Chicago Bears defense is Billings, who handles that nose tackle position. A lot of times, he kind of plays at the tilted one technique, and a how does Frank Ragnow deal with that matchup? Because the majority of the time, he's going to see Frank Ragnow. Now, for us, I love that matchup. All right, I'm glad we have a guy like Frank Ragnow for a matchup like this. And I've seen teams, like, for example, Kansas City, good, good movement on Billings. But Billings is a very powerful human being at the point of attack. And he's shown some real quickness at the line of scrimmage. Now, he doesn't flow great laterally in terms of changing directions. But he can get upfield and he can be a presence at the point of attack. And it can be difficult to move him off the spot. Then you look at a guy like Jones were 93 on this defense and he gives you a little bit of a different flavor a lot of times manning their three technique much more of a upfield quickness type of player that can really wreck things in the backfield and force cutback lanes now I don't think he holds his ground as well when you talk about some of the combo blocks that you can set up so keep an eye on for the Lions potentially trying to utilize their tackles whether that be Panay Sewell or Taylor Decker who did this really well a couple weeks ago and down block and get movement and as always, one key is getting them to play two deep safeties. And if you can do that, here's a look right here where you get that hard double team right at the line of scrimmage here on again, Jones. We saw the Raiders have some success there. So I'd keep an eye on the Lions trying to attack there. But I think what's really interesting is how well did they handle this in the interior, especially without Jonah Jackson, because to me, the run game could see some different things based on how that matchup goes. I want to quickly jump in here to talk a little bit about a frustration that all the sports fans have to go through. We're looking to get tickets to that sporting event. And whether it is a sporting event maybe you want to go see the Detroit Lions and making their playoff push or you're trying to go to a comedy event a theater event maybe you want to go to listen to some music live you shouldn't have to deal with the frustrations of not knowing what the view is going to look like from your seat or not knowing that all these hidden fees were going to pop up once you clicked on the ticket to go check out you're going to have to worry when you are buying tickets to your next big event game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports music comedy and theater events near you killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee 
Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I know multiple people that have used my code DOSE and have went to sporting events this year, including myself who went to the Carolina Panthers game and getting a front row view from the second level at Ford Field, man, it was money. But I knew exactly what I was getting myself into when I bought those tickets because of the view from your seat. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. I knew what the view was gonna look like from my seat when I arrived. I didn't have to wait to click on checkout and then I see all these fees pop up and I thought it was run price but it was another because they have an all-in pricing option now next time that I go and look to buy tickets to another big event I can purchase those tickets in two taps now that I have set up my account take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code dose for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code D O S E dose for $20 off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed I will say and i've seen all teams kind of utilize this is a lot of counter run plays we know the lions will involve that in their offense as well sometimes that's counter pulls sometimes that's also just zone counter plays but counter runs are kind of a staple that i've seen everybody use against this team so i would anticipate the lions are going to mix some of those in one it has the ability to hold their linebackers which is key because they are fast flowing but also number two occasionally you can get these edge defenders to step inside you can get outside the tackle box i think kansas city did a really good job of utilizing these counter plays and because of that especially when they get outside the tackle box that's where a guy like Jameer Gibbs could be extremely effective getting outside the tackle box making a guy miss in space and that's one big thing I'll give them credit for is I really like the way their defensive backs handle in terms of run support I think they have a really good run support from the back end the slot position the safety position they have big hitters Jaquan Brisk or Kyler Gordon they are very physical players their cornerbacks will hit run play I would expect to see in this game mixed in is a lot is, is some counter runs pulling offensive linemen working the seal these defensive linemen down specifically with their tackles and potentially kick out outside of that now a big key to that a lot of times can come back to if they're putting a safety consistently in the box if you can get them in two high looks some of those power run plays pulling offensive linemen two pulls handing handling billing specifically in the interior that's something that they could actually have some real success with okay first off I think our tight ends can block up their edge defenders I think we could actually have a success based on the way that those guys have blocked all year and what we saw against the Chargers I think they're going to be able to handle business a lot of times in this game so it comes back to those interior matchups and if the Lions are winning those which they're very capable of after we saw last week this could be an opportunity to say forget all those numbers we're going to run the darn football and then we're going to make you put a safety in the box and because that we're going to win on the outside basically what we did to the la chargers as a game plan let's talk about the second level of this defense their linebackers like i said they're fast flowing we'll talk about coverage a little bit more in a second and they really do a nice job of avoiding offensive line blocks that's really the biggest downside to me to pulling offensive linemen against this team is their ability to avoid blocks not allow you to pick up at the second level even if they don't have that safety in the box and they can disrupt things because their ability to just make you miss when you're trying to hit them at the second level and again their defensive back support can be a big part and a big help with that as well so i would keep an eye on the lions probably trying to utilize some of that zone rushing in this game i think the power scheme works if you're picking up those linebackers i think it really works for this game but i would keep an eye on the lines trying to utilize some of those counters potentially get outside the tackle box i think early on watching this i was thinking this is a really good day for montgomery game because with these linebackers with the counter setups you have to be a disciplined runner to try to get these linebackers to fill and be able to cut off of that I love the idea of trying to double team, get combo blocks on Jones if he's in the game and try to get movement there. And if the Lions are getting movement with their zone rushing, which again, I think they're very capable of. You're watching these other teams and you're looking at them and you're saying, okay, they're maybe not having consistent success, but our offensive line is better. And we just saw that against the Chargers. But again, this is where I see Monty, especially if we're getting some movement in there and the Lions want to kind of stick to their roots a little bit. This is where I think Monty could be extremely successful because I think their biggest strength in the interior is their ability at the point of attack. And here you can see Dexter getting pushed and penetrated through the blocker and that's where you have to be patient set up blocks and hit your holes you can't be running into this push and that's where I think Monty would be really good if the Lions stick to it however the more I watched the more I felt like Jameer Gibbs could actually be very impactful in the run game because it could turn into the Lions trying to lean to let's get outside the tackle box a little bit more often and if that's the case that's Jameer Gibbs area and you're talking about making defensive backs miss even though Dave Montgomery had a nasty run that's where you like Jameer Gibbs Dave Montgomery makes a ton of sense and he could give us real consistency if we're moving 
guys on the interior, but if Chicago holds true to, I think, what they do pretty well, I would keep a guy on an eye on Jameer Gibbs schematically making a lot of sense to have some success in this game. I told you, I'm going to try to make this quicker passing defense for the Chicago Bears. Now, there's a lot of things to really touch on here. First thing I would say, when you just talk about them individually, I always point out, yeah, who do you want to attack defensively? And of course, it's going to be Tyree Stevenson if he is out there on the field. Or if it's Terrell Smith, if it's a rookie, you want to go at that guy defensively in coverage. Tyree Stevenson has been by far, I think, their worst cover corner this season. But I think a big part of that as well is who do you get matched up on him? He's not a Brad Press corner. That's who he was coming out of Miami. However, what we saw back in college, and I think we've seen a little bit in the NFL as well, is he can have trouble with speed. So if you get them in man coverage, if you get them in single high looks, we've seen off coverage, you know, teams have been able to attack them with speed out routes, things like that, go at him there, early downs, three-step drop, put it out versus speed, but also the ability to get vertical. You can even look at Antoine Green. He had a couple of huge plays in their game, North Carolina against Miami, in his last season with North Carolina, getting vertical against that defense. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be Antoine Green's game. Probably would be more Jamison Williams, but Jamison, to be honest, is probably a better deep threat. I mean, he's been able to get over top even against press this season, though we haven't always come through. I was recently watching that Baltimore game just the second half because I was struggling to watch the first time, and his ability to get over top, this could show up in this game specifically with that matchup. However, outside of that, I think they're very strong in the secondary. Kyler Gordon would be the next player I would keep an eye on as someone that you could look to attack defensively. The safety position is healthy with Eddie Jackson and also Jaquan Brisker, though I don't think that a guy like Jaquan Brisker max matches up extremely well with tight ends one-on-one, -on -one. so if you're getting that matchup specifically in third down because they love to play cover one in third down, that's someone I would also look to attack, but what I'm looking at it personnel-wise, Jalen Johnson, of course, is over there as well, but personnel-wise, one thing I would really keep an eye on, again, I know we're kind of going back down this road, especially on third down, is a player like Jameer Gibbs. The running back usage from a lot of teams that I've seen has been pretty effective when they've utilized them in the past game for a few reasons. One, the Lions are, of course, the team that's going to use motion. They're going to try to get tails in coverage, more so than a team like Carolina, for example, that you see a lot of stagnant offensively. You're not going to get that, I don't think, from the Lions. So that tied along with the opportunity to get one-on-ones underneath, whether that's third down where you'll put a safety, they'll put safeties on the running back, a linebacker on the running back. That's something that you want to try to exploit, and those guys usually can win that. Or they're sitting in a quarters look defensively, but they have to bring five-man rushes when they play in some of the zone coverages. So again, you can get running backs singled up one-on-one -on -one in the pass game. Now, I don't want to make it sound like this team blitzes all the time. They're pretty much middling in that category, but one thing that stood out to me before I even saw this stat was I don't think they get a ton of pressure. Even when they're blitzing, I don't see them getting a ton of pressure. They don't consistently get free rushers. Now, what they will do is bring linebackers. That's something that you have to be very aware of as an offensive line, and they'll also bring it for the slot as well. Kyler Gordon, those guys are aggressive. They're willing to come off the edge, but they'll bring linebackers and they'll drop out even if they're not blitzing. So that's really the main thing there, and also interior stunts from this defensive line, whether that's the defensive tackles. They really like to attack the A-gaps. You'll get a lot of double A-gap looks pre-snap, specifically on third down, so you really have to focus on the interior, and I'm sure they'll try to test it with Jonah Jackson out. Between the guard, center guard, those guys, to me, are going to be crucial in pass protection in this game. But with that being said, I haven't seen a ton of free rushers, and I don't think they're, they have a ton of elite pass rushers either. Yannick was an addition before the season. He hasn't brought a ton there. Montez Sweat, I think, is a, is a good pass rusher, though I don't think he's elite. And then on the interior, they have some guys that can really win, specifically with guys like Jones. Uh, Dexter has had some success occasionally getting some pass rush, but I don't think they're a very good pass rush team. That's kind of show you only 16.5% of the time do they get pressure. That's 31st in the league. And again, they're pretty much middling in blitz rate. So to me, that's a real positive because they haven't shown much of that this year. And I think the offensive line for the Lions is pretty strong, even without Jonah Jackson, that I think that's going to be a really good matchup for them is pass protection against them trying to get pressure on the Lions, especially if you start passing a little bit more in this game to try to attack what they're worst at statistically. Statistically speaking, on the season, they're 30th in passer rating allowed, giving up 20 touchdowns to six interceptions. Six interceptions isn't bad, but 20 touchdowns is not great at this point in the season. So statistically, they're not as good in coverage. And again, I think a lot of that can be that you can kind of find matchups that you really like. Here's some things I would keep an eye on them specifically, though, in coverage. First thing would be from cover three. It's something that they like to utilize. And the real key that I noted here was that they like to bring an extra rusher when they play cover three defensively one less underneath defender. So that's something I would really keep an eye on in this one, especially teams that might go heavy personnel. If they're going to roll into cover three, they'll bring an extra rusher on the play. 
they'll only drop three out to play underneath. They won't leave extra guys in coverage if they don't feel that it's necessary. I would keep an eye on the Lions in this game schematically to look to kind of run some of those stacked routes, some of the combination routes between two players. We started to see this a little bit last year against Chicago where we had some success where maybe run a quick hitch and a dig right behind it, but you can kind of stack players up pre-snap or really just run two players kind of on top of each other against his zone coverage. To me, that could be a really big key in this game. However, the Lions want to set that up, whether that's two tight ends, maybe that's with the back and something right behind it. Lions have done a really good job over the last couple years doing that and attacking that in coverage. Linebackers, they're linebackers. I really like them in coverage because they close ground very quickly. They close airspace quickly. So even if you feel like you have some room to make a pass, they close that distance fast. So if you can sit someone down underneath, force that linebacker to pull up in coverage, that's when you can really start to find that success within the second level. We've seen the Lions do that on the play action sets. We've seen teams spread them out and do it. It's something that I would keep an eye on. We saw that last year when we played Chicago. Layered second level throws in this game. I think that can make a ton of sense. Now, I think there's two ways that really Lions could go about this. One, I think when you look at them, you could say that you could pull more receivers on the field, utilize motion, be less stagnant than some other teams I've seen like Carolina be where their offense, they just don't have a ton of movement pre-snap. Now, I did see if you consistently spread this team out. As you can see here, they can get very creative with some of the looks that they can give you pre-snap versus post-snap rolling safeties here in a cover three look but you're also noticing that there's no movement from Carolina so here's safety linebacker switch still cover three but there's no movement and I think the Lions movement could help them a ton pre-snap the Lions do find a way to kind of get them to dictate coverage a lot of times with that motion teams like Kansas City did that really well and then because of I don't think they get a ton of pressure that's something the Lions could look to lean into in this game it would not shock me but like we saw last year we played Chicago it's a little bit different right now in terms of who the Lions have, but like last year against Chicago, the Lions could also go down that route of multiple tight ends on the field, play action, get the defense to respect the run, hitting some of those second level crossing routes offensively. That's something that they did last time they played Chicago. So I think there's a couple ways they could go about that. Also keep an eye out for them going into two deep safeties consistently on second down. It's something that I noted, whether they're up big in a game, it's before half, or that usually happens, or if it's in a situation where maybe they have you backed up on a second and long, thing that they like to do is force checkdowns. They try to get you to go underneath and set up third down and mediums. They're fine with doing that defensively. Now, statistically speaking, they're not a very good third down defense. They're actually 30th in the league. Me, offensively and defensively, we're about to speak about this. First down is key in that sense. You want to pick up positive yards, but to me, again, that's where you can also open up getting their defense a little bit more aggressive with their safeties, hitting some of those play action shot plays. But on second down, if you don't gain any yards, keep an eye on them dropping into some of the two deep looks. And again, that's where I circle a guy like Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield the tight ends underneath trying to pick up some chunks and getting us into the third and medium sets because then on third down what they love to do is play cover one a lot of the notes that I took when I was watching them, I try to note what coverage they're going into majority of the time it was cover one defensively which is a single eye safety and man coverage across the board now there's variations you can roll down a safety you can play a linebacker underneath you can bring a blitz they'll play different variations of it sometimes the blitz sometimes they'll drop out but they love to single up on third down and if that's the case in this game you have to find again who is that third down beater? And I kind of told you the guys that I like to attack. If St. Brown gets one-on-one, -on -one, that's something that you definitely have to lean into. Like we saw last year, we hit a corner route, single high safety. You can get outside the numbers. Some guys underneath to pull the corners down, and you hit a corner route to St. Brown one-on-one. -on -one. Again, he's probably going to see some Kyler Gordon. I still like that matchup in this game. He's given up a, over a 100 pass rating this season. Stevenson, Terrell Smith, whoever is out there opposite of Jalen Johnson, I would look to that matchup. And then also the utilization of the back. Now, the key here would be this. Because of the way they bring pressure. If you're going to utilize your running back on routes, I like that. However, if you're not going to and Dave Montgomery's in the game, he's going to be crucial or whoever that will be, will be crucial in pass row because they will blitz and when they do, again, they like to attack between really the B gaps. So you really have to keep an eye on that running back being able to step in and pick up and pass row and we could see some Montgomery if the Lions want to lean into that stylistically. He's going to be crucial for stepping in, picking up linebackers and at times, defensive linemen that get through because of the way that they like to blitz defensively. The aspect I would keep an eye on here would be screens. This is something again that I've seen every team kind of utilize against this defense is screens. Specifically, maybe some of those, maybe a throwback screen, but maybe more so of kind of the fake screens where you set up a running back screen, you kind of fake it, you come back to the tight end. Set up a tight end screen, fake it, go back to the running back. And again, fast flowing linebackers that can stop screens, but specifically you can get them flowing one direction. And again, that's where you can set up some of the misdirection looks.
and also on obvious pass downs, the aggressiveness with their defensive line, the way they get upfield, they're not great in terms of changing direction and matching, specifically from the interior. So again, I think it's another reason where you can set up some of these delayed screen looks and a lot of teams have. So kind of like the way that you run counter plays, I've seen a lot of teams because again, of their really good run defense this season, I think we have a really good offensive line, so we're unique in the sense that we could have more success than a lot of teams have, but it's been a big time extension of the run game for a lot of teams that I've watched. So for the Lions, if they're not getting the move that they want, watch for them to start utilizing screen play, specifically running back screens specifically some of the misdirection screens to try to use that as an extension of their run game that's why i could see jameer gibbs having a big game really both receiving and rushing really in the red zone you can also point to this on third down as well watch for the lions to try to set up some rub routes because of the way that they play pure man coverage but also even when they go to some of their zone coverage looks when you get inside the five look for the lions to try to utilize that i've seen multiple teams you can go back to us last year when we utilized our tight end set up a rub route got the tight end underneath he walks into the end zone we know we've been a little bit more less inc less consistent this year punching it in when we get in red zone spots but like us they are a terrible red zone defense they give up a lot of touchdowns so look for rub routes same thing on third as well especially if it's third and short look for those kind of setups from lions offensively moving on to the other side of the ball and we talk about the chicago bears offense which is kind of difficult the offensive line like i said it's a little bit new look across the board you have braxton jones at left tackle who's been a really good pass protector so far this season tevin jenkins will slide back to left guard where we've seen some consistency we know you can get wins on him you can get wins on braxton jones as well but we've seen some more consistency there from tevin jenkins at left guard then in the center position i think they have their most inconsistent player if he starts this week lucas patrick Rick Me is the most inconsistent player, so when we talk about the nose tackle position, how key that could be, not only because of what they do schematically, but also because I think that's probably the weakest spot on their offensive line. At right guard, they plug Nate Davis back into that mix, who's been solid so far this season. Again, he's another player that you could win on in the interior, specifically a guy like a Lee McNeil, because this game, kind of like some games in the past, it's going to be crucial to transition from playing the run to rushing the passer. Now, it's different because Fields is such a mobile threat, but like the Vegas Raiders game, that's going to be another crucial aspect and the reason for that is this is a very heavy play action offense so this is going to be another key part they do a lot of pistol looks they'll go two backs they'll play kind of some stylistically similarities to a got team like seattle so that ability to transition could be key the interior guys should really help us there they have an opportunity to help us specifically on the right side of the offense fine and then they have a rookie in darnell Wright. now darnell Wright, we know how well he hung with will a with will anderson coming out of college and that was kind of like the yo look at him in this game this is one of those teams where i can see the lions leaning into putting a five man front on the field and if that's the case we know Hutchinson will be out there on the edge but last year was a guy like James Houston you guys can all probably remember how critical he was some of the sacks that he made the forced fumble that he had on fields when he took off the athleticism that he brought was crucial I'm gonna doubt that Bruce Irvin is gonna play in this game if he did it'd be great but I can see the Lions going into that five-man front maybe that's with the Jack Campbell on the edge because of the athleticism the ability to drop out in coverage less about maybe pass rushing prowess if it's not Jack Campbell which to me would make sense that it's not the Julian Okwaras, the Charles Harris, whoever's stepping into that role, we got to keep an eye on that player. Again, you want to have athleticism out there. They're going to try to utilize the quarterback read option. It also opens up their ability to bring a five-man five man rush without having to bring it from the second or, yeah, really the second level. They can bring it right off the line of scrimmage and just not drop out a third underneath defender. Say they're in quarters, they just drop two defenders. And to me, that's it was kind of an Aaron Glenn special in a sense to me because Aaron Glenn had that kind of strategy going in like, hey, we're going to bring a five-man rush against Chicago last season, but we're just going to put five, we're going to have our five guys on the line of scrimmage just rush that's going to be the difference so yes you get an extra blitzer but we just take away a guy from underneath in coverage and against this team sometimes they'll limit the options that she'll actually put out there on the route tree especially when they go to a lot of their play action looks they're trying to get big hitters crossing routes you know vertical threats dj moore now added to that mix the rushing offense first and they are a very good rushing offense and now you throw fields into that mix who has had some monster games against us specifically it's usually like one or two just huge runs that he has and it's like oh his numbers are insane that's usually what takes place but even on the season lines are one of the worst teams statistically in terms of yards per game allowed two quarterbacks this season rushing the football but i think what makes them so tricky is the misdirection the two back looks the fullback two running backs in the backfield especially if foreman's up in this game the receivers that they'll utilize in the backfield makes it very tough because you're going to have limited resources to stop the run that's what makes it difficult now one team that was really interesting was a team like kansas city kansas city blew them out on a scoreboard but i thought one thing they started to do in that game was on second down they started to crank up the blitz to stop the run they started bringing extra players getting extremely aggressive and they were just we're gonna blitz to stop this run and they started to create negatives get them in third or third and long situations and i thought it was able to get them off the field but it's why defensively to me 
third down it's always crucial it's always a crucial down but to me the first two downs are what's really the key in this game how do you perform on first down and second down a lot of times you'll see them look for some of those shot plays offensively the quarterback run is of course always in play there but if you get them behind the chains that kind of starts to go away from them or if you're winning in the game that can start to get pulled away from them things to keep an eye on like i said multiple backs in the backfield keep an eye on a fullback they're not afraid to run the ball on third down if you thought we were the only team that's willing to run the ball on third and five this is also a team that's willing to run on third and five so i would just say that statistically on the season they're averaging 4.5 yards per carry that's seventh in the league 135 yards per game that's fifth in the league and third and expected points added through the run game so yes statistically they're pretty awesome as a rushing team and the quarterback is a big threat of that but even without them they're running the ball well first off it's the nose tackle position one if braddock martin's playing like i said his ability to potentially hold multiple gaps for the lions can help free up guys defensively even if you're not consistently putting a safety into the box to have run support and that would be huge for the lions because of the quarterback threat because you can free up an extra player if a guy like broderick martin can handle multiple gaps then i would keep an eye on our defense events especially with a five-man front okay yes edge rushers but i'm really speaking on the john kaminsky's the josh Passwells, the guys that are going to have to deal with tackles a lot of the time maybe they're playing into the b gap trying to play through the c gap there keep an eye on that piece john kaminsky josh pascal to handle down blocks that they're going to try to throw with a guy like darnell right because of his physicality he can really do that trying to get outside the tackle box that position specifically to me is a key as well as the nose tackle position in this game only really run outside the tackle box with the running backs but they'll also utilize quarterback powers quarterback sweeps they like to pull offensive linemen and again they like to get outside the tackle box you'll get a lot of wide zone hitting plays whether that's a toss or just a wide zone rushing plays but a lot of times it's kind of through a toss and to me this is one of those games where gap discipline becomes so crucial and being able to win everybody across the board here you can see with the tight end and the defensive end on this play not being able to get inside and then the safety who fills kind of that split zone look that they give for the quarterback to have a lead block on the play when he settles inside to play through a run gap that's when they get to the edge and they have a huge running lane for the quarterback and to me where i think they're really difficult is they're capable of attacking you in a lot of different spots specifically where they may feel like you're a little bit weaker defensively so on this first play you can see going at the edge defender utilizing the tight end to kind of seal it off here they seal off that defensive tackle in the three technique here with their tackle and then again they get up to the second level here blocking your edge defender with a tight end and a fullback but really, regardless of how you feel they are going to attack you offensively, really the key always comes back to who becomes that front side defender and who can win. And you can see here like Darnell Wright on the defensive end, he's able to hold his ground. And that's usually what it seems to come back to because they can set these combo blocks like here against that one technique 91, get up to the second level. But as you can see, holding the ground against Darnell Wright, forcing a little bit of a cutback here and allowing the defenders to kind of rally to the football onto their pass game statistically they're not as good here on the season we'll just talk about fields he's completing 61.7 percent of his passes 11 touchdowns and six picks which isn't bad and a 91.6 pass rating probably the worst thing of that is the completion percentage and also 1200 yards basically total on this season so far to me the pass defense and the run defense tie together because again if you can stop the run without having to consistently roll a safety down the box specifically on first down that is crucial because i think for the lions in this game coverage wise i think kind of back to what aaron glenn did last season it looks with a five-man rush being able to play two deep safety specifically on early downs can really help minimize some of the explosives they're able to create and the lines have been really good there statistically all season it's not giving up explosives until last week against the chargers and in this game i think that's crucial because of the shot plays i like to hit the crossing routes because of the man beaters that they have they're going to test your safeties if you have a single high safety so those guys got to be on point tracy walker kirby joseph diving on crossing routes taking that away here you can see Denver rolls down into the single high look and really the key becomes the tight end on this play in line running this crossing route with the vertical route when he rolls to the middle of the field they run a crossing route right underneath it and again he has not in a position to dive down and take this away and it picks up a huge chunk for them the rollouts the bootlegs huge part of their offense that's like DJ Moore in the mix as well as having Darnell Mooney still who they use really creatively you'll see him on like beneath routes against man coverage he, he's very creative and he can get a lot of matchup issues there's still an offense that loves to lean into rollouts offensively kind of cutting the field in half but also utilizing some of the layers concept first second level having guys just crossing his face so you'll get a lot of crossers so the safeties are going to be key there keep an eye on again we talked about that five-man rush if darren glenn started to bring it from like a slot position and really try to cut the field in half again maybe try to make him play through the boundary side of the field or towards or away from his weapons multiple weapons bringing brian branch off the blitz he's a very good blitzer i think it's one of his best traits we saw this a lot against seattle who again a lot of play action pistol those kind of things aaron glenn 
could go right back into that. I know it didn't consistently work, but there was a lot of opportunities there. Don't be shocked. We saw it last time we played at Chicago, bringing some of those slot blitzes, trying to kind of force fields one direction cut off the side of the field for him and then play that way another thing that we saw Aaron Glenn do last time we played Chicago was combo coverage now I don't think we've seen as much of these looks from the Chicago Bears offense this season at least I haven't where it's as many of the spread looks offensively but combination coverage is something I would also keep an eye on in this game and specifically meaning there half the field plays man the other half plays zone and what we saw a lot of times last time we played this team was to the boundary the short side of the field we would get man coverage or if it was like a tight end there was two receivers so it was a tight end and one receiver on that side of the field you might get man coverage safety and corner one-on-one -on -one. then to that field side or maybe where they have more receivers you would see a zone coverage look defensively to handle some of maybe the quick rollouts that they'll try to hit or some of the quick hitters you had a lot of combo coverage that Aaron Glenn threw at them last season one that could happen if the Lions are able to build up the lead and they have to start to kind of lean into the pass game they start to go spread it out a little bit more look for that defensively but also third down situations they could also try to lean into that team like Kansas City played a lot of cover one defensively lines could mix in between man and also combination coverage defensively that would not shock me it also can help them keep eyes on the quarterback while still partly playing man coverage so again we know the lines don't play up here spy we know the pass rush lanes are going to be crucial you want to get pressure i want to see zed rushers still be able to get pressure in this game but you still have to really deal with pass rush lanes first and foremost against justin fields because of his ability to just take off and we know that better than anybody but with that being said that combination coverage can kind of open that up for you defensively the players that i would really spotlight here first off would be the linebacker position Alex Anzalone Jack Campbell whoever that may be really I mean you could also see some Derek Barnes but I would really circle a guy like Alex Anzalone in this game one because they're tight ends even in zone coverage their ability to attack vertically is something that you have to keep an eye on a lot of times they can force you to carry so for me a guy like Alex Anzalone whoever is out there at linebacker their tight ends are a big part also communication on tight ends is key especially once they get inside the red zone making sure you communicate where those guys are they like to utilize their tight ends they have Cole Komet who's a big time middle field threat but they like to utilize multiple tight ends as well they'll still go into those heavy personnel packages we understand the receivers that they added but they'll still go heavy personnel whether it's in the backfield or at the tight end position so the tight ends the linebackers are going to be a key piece again because the Lions are probably going to have to match that personnel so you're going to see the linebackers in coverage they're going to be extremely important in this game as well as I think Brian Branch and not only for what he could be as a blitzer in a way that he could really help impact this game but also in coverage because they do like to take shot place through the slot receiver position if they feel that you're in cover three they they do a nice job of getting cover three beaters if you watch them against Denver they ran kind of an out and up look which you know the cornerback carried it but he was in a really tough position they end up giving up a touchdown but then they came back had a sense of the situation that they were again go single high safety and Justin Fields just looked off the safety and they had a wide open tight end going up the seam there so they can get beaters especially to a single high safety look let's come back to the ability to stop the run defensively and if you're a team like Kansas City I would take something out of their book of hey on second down if we can get you know limit what they pick up on first down whether that's a run or if it's a pass if it can go incomplete maybe look to get aggressive on second down and try to shut down that run play don't let them pick up big chunk plays in the run play the best third down offenses in football statistically here's really my three keys for us defensively in this game number one avoid giving up big pass plays and I think we'll have a good plan from Aaron Glenn in this game from what I've already seen but again like I said that can kind of stem back to your ability to stop the run number two linebackers in coverage we're going to see this whether that's zone or man combo coverage linebackers in coverage but then also the linebackers are going to be responsible as well a lot of times for keeping eyes on Justin Fields if they're not manned up so they're going to have a big time responsibility in this one and then first down at defense again the first two downs really are the critical downs to me more than anything is how do you handle business on first and second down can you stonewall that run game at all players to watch in this game offensively for me it's going to be Frank Ragnow I think he can set the tone if he dominates at the point of attack the Lions could run the ball way better than we've seen a lot of teams do this season. We've teams we've seen teams have success at times, whether that's New Orleans with their outside zone rushing attack, and Kamara was running really well in that game. Then at the running back position, to me, I think David Montgomery makes sense if we're doing well in the offensive line. But to me, I think this could absolutely turn into a Jameer Games rushing and in the past game. So I'm going to really circle Jameer Gibbs for this one. And I think he's got an opportunity to have a massive game for us in this game, even on second downs if we're forced to go underneath. And then finally, I would say at the receiver position, 
who gets that matchup on the young cornerback, but also if it's Tyreek Stevenson, we know Antoine Green was able to get vertical. Jamison Williams, that's a really big threat in his game, but then also a guy like Donovan Peoples-Jones, and the reason I circle him is because specifically how much man coverage they like to play on third down. If you're caught in like a third and eight plus, and they're playing cover one, someone's going to have to be able to get to the sticks and get open, and I think with these cover corners, you're talking about Lions like to run some of those deep curl routes, come back to the ball. To me, that's not what Jamison has shown that he's best at, at least to this point. Neither has Antoine Green, but Donovan Peoples-Jones, a new addition to this offense, that's an area where he can really win. Is at the top of the route, he's savvy, he's a physical player, and he's really good in contesting. He has great hands. So his ability to spot up on some of those potential third down spots could be a difference maker at times in this game. So I would keep an eye on it. Plus, he brings still vertical speed. Defensively, Alex Anzalone. You could really circle any linebacker in this game, whether they're on the line or they're off ball, but I'm going to circle Alex Anzalone as a player of the watch. Also, the defensive ends. Josh Paschal, John Kaminsky, and then the edge rushers because they're going to be thrown into a lot of read option looks, but I still think they also have to give us occasional pressure in this game, but then also setting the edge on so much of their wide rushing attack. And then finally, Brian Branch blitzing opportunity, the way they're going to attack him in coverage, and the run support's going to have to be there as well. I don't really doubt that Brian Branch can bring all of those things to the table, but he's definitely going to get pushed vertically in this game. I don't doubt that, especially on early downs, so Brian Branch will probably be thrown into the mix a little bit in this one. The key matchup to watch that I'm excited for is who matches up with DJ Moore. Overall, I would have loved to see this with Mosley and DJ Moore coming into the year. Unfortunately, Mosley's injured, but we saw these guys battle when he was at Carolina and Mosley was at San Fran, and it was a great battle. I thought Mosley played him well. I would assume we're going to see a lot of Sutton on DJ Moore in this game. Now, like I said, they are creative. A guy like Darnell Mooney, the way that they utilize him pre-snap, they'll put him in a the slot, they'll put him in the backfield, the motions behind the line of scrimmage, the pass catching behind the line of scrimmage, the layers that they can create with him, his vertical speed. He's threatening, but who matches DJ Moore? Because right now, with Mooney, but specifically with DJ Moore, they have more man beaters than they had last time we played this team. So to me, DJ Moore is, of course, like the biggest passing game threat that they have. And Cole Komet, I mean, they have real weapons right now, especially if you're leaning into man coverage. So to me, keep an eye on who matches DJ Moore. I would assume it's going to be a lot of Cam Sutton in this game, and I'm so fired up to see that matchup. To me, the Lions, I think, can really win this game soundly if they can get up specifically early in this game because you can start to pull back what Chicago can do. That's when you start to rack up sacks when they have to lean into the passing game. You start to limit their offense, and you can win soundly. This thing also could go down to the wire. And really, we played both of these games last year. In Chicago, 31-30, we got the win. At home, 41-10, we got the win. One of them, we built up a lead. Now, they scored on their first two possessions, I believe, touchdown field goal, but then after that, we kind of halted it, but we continued to score offensively, put up a two-score lead at halftime, and once that happened, the game was kind of the game kind of got out of hand for them. However, the other time, when you're going back and forth or you're playing catch-up, that's when you have an, a situation where everything's available for them, and just like that game in Chicago where Fields was able to pull the ball down and take off, that's where that's still a threat in the game, and that's where they become really threatening. So for me in this one, I'm going to go with another confident prediction. We're going to see if I get it. I'm going to go 31-17. Alliance win this game by two touchdowns. I could easily see this going down to the wire and being very close because if they keep it close throughout the game and it's manageable for them and everything stays alive, very possible. If they're able to hit some explosives, which is very possible within their offense because we've seen teams give those up, if they're able to hit explosives and you really can't stop the run, they can open up some things and they can force you to have to pass the football and try to play catch up offensively but with that being said I think our offense can have real success passing the football once again in this game and I think the Lions maybe in the second half will be able to pull away a little bit so I'm gonna go 31-17 Lions at home they get to eight and two for the first time since 1962 so with that being said let me know your thoughts in the comments below thank you for watching and I'm out